do you want to be chief minister of this state one day 100% no madam if i had to um, ask mr anamalai to describe himself in one sentence i am like that what will be a successful result for you for me bjp has to cross 20% alone and we have to reach somewhere near 25% that is a test for us as a party was it more difficult to be a police officer or is it more difficult to be a politician so you cannot afford a single mistake you are in the press all the time one word can go wrong you are very conscious It's late at night in Coimbatore and we have just returned from following and tracking Mr. Anna Malai on his campaign trail in Coimbatore and I have to say that I have witnessed absolute hysteria and complete sort of desperation among people to get to him i saw people clambering on his open vehicle giving him little letters of their grievances people pushing against each other just to get a glimpse of him he is very much the man of the moment the man in the hot seat and the man carrying the expectation of his party that somehow sir you are going to turn around the fortunes of the bjp in tamil nadu are you feeling the pressure madam this is a party that believes in hard work bjp is always an incremental hard working party we do one booth at a time we rise rise and rise if you look at tamil nadu story even during the jansang day it was a very hard working party very hard working party and many a time the narrative were against us the other party had superior leaders uh, when you had leaders like dr mg ramachandran leaders like madam jayalalitha who stand for certain things who are seen as nationalist when bjp is also operating in the same space it becomes very tough for the party to grow naturally yeah because th- those leaders are are very tall and uh, almost the same things they did they say oh half late especially after dmk has come to power we see a lot of hope for the party because we are behaving as a very aggressive opposition party and the cadre strength has grown big thanks to modi ji from 2014 the party is only growing in tamil nadu and i believe 2024 lok sabha election will be the culmination of lot of hard work we have put madam now i must tell you mr anamalai sir that every evening when we do our show our audience will say when are you going to interview mr anamalai we want to see mr anamalai on mojo story so i have to say thank you and our audience is really going to be pleased to see you i saw a lot of young people desperate to meet you and it's almost as if they didn't understand that you're fighting a national election i think in your speech you also tried to explain that they're coming with little bits of paper little presents for you flowers for you women girls how do you cope with it all and what are you promising uh, we we promised them change and uh, today today is a reflection of a lot of things we have done over the last many many years madam and the people of tamil nadu are desperate desperate for a common grounded leader like a boy next door mm. who they can touch they can feel here it is do all- you think of yourself as a no. as an ordinary guy i am a very ordinary guy i live very ordinary i mean you have cult status right now you're the rock star of tamil nadu no, 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 i am a very ordinary person and when i when i'm a politician of course there is a responsibility to me once i get out of the car i am just a very normal person uh say come from a family like that my father and mother still work in the farm mm. i go back i i i live in my farm my father and mother does does the normal work daily and they were doing it before i was in the seat they will do it 10 years from now wherever i am and of course my wife she minds her business and nobody has seen my wife's face also we live a very normal family so when i come here i get grounded because i come into a home that is very normal and more importantly madam tamil nadu people it is all very flimsy style you have big people or uh, you know 
people who are made up and all those things yeah. a common people wants to touch you yeah. hold you talk to you listen to their grievances and at least hear their emotions of course i give them time i'm very particular about it children women i give a lot of my time though it is a lot of strain on me because from a campaign vehicle yeah. you just have to hunt down and and touch that little kid they want to bring the kid to you i'm just a normal person but still they think i have to give blessings to that kid and i just every time i say my thanks to the lord to the god to the almighty just to say that we live in a very privileged space a lot of people trust you people open up their heart to you i can only be myself madam and wherever god takes you he takes you if i had to um, ask mr annamalai to describe himself in one sentence you've given me one sentence i'm a very ordinary man use an adjective apart from ordinary how would you describe your distinct characteristics as a politician straightforward madam i don't mince words i sense that in you i am like that and i am not that it just are smooth and very nice and diplomatic not at all the kind of guy but can such kind of guys last in politics i don't know madam but everything in life everywhere there is an exception and probably i think i am that exception Now let me ask Mr Anamalai the key question. He says he stands for change. What will that change look like if you are able to make a significant electoral dent in these elections which obviously you're hoping for? What will you do differently that is different from the DMK, from the AI DMK, from the Congress? We want to bring our politics to the common man, madam. The common man and Tamil Nadu politics is so distant, it's so vast. And everybody thinks because of their superior symbol value in Tamil Nadu unlike other states Tamil Nadu the election value is so superior a party like DMK or ADMK they always claim we are always a 30 percent party no matter the leader mm-hmm. so what happened that after a point of time becomes an arrogance you don't listen to the ground you don't keep your ears to the ground so BJP were very different we want to be very humble all the time and be in the ground only when you are losing for us if you see madam BJP in Tamil Nadu if you look at our performance every day we work there is nothing called rest day every day some party work some booth work this work that work Shakti Kendra work we just finished a eight month grueling yatra straight away we are in the election and we are giving a hope to the people to say look we are with you you might criticize us mm. you might criticize some of our policies it's okay mm. but come we are with you we will discuss but if you are not with if 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 we are not with you then nobody is with you before you came uh, i just went to a village because the village wanted to boycott the election they put oh, a black flag they said we are not voting mm. i went all the way to say look you have to vote because they had some grievance against the state committee i said look you vote for bjp don't vote for bjp that's a secondary one mm. but the primary one you have to vote because if you don't vote the politicians will not even respect your village one time they, the village boycotts no politician comes inside he'll skip your village campaigning he'll go to the second village but next time it doesn't even care for a village they know how to get votes without getting your votes so i urge them you said you vote second if you decide to vote consider my party and consider modi ji i'm giving you things like what modi ji has done that's a secondary one but the primary one you cannot boycott this what we do other parties will not even do that because we believe we have a larger responsibility than just contesting an election now the big question and this is a question in all elections is what does a crowd translate into right um we i saw first hand i was following you from one corner to the other what does a crowd translate into in terms of votes right and some people say that big crowds don't necessarily translate into votes so for mr anamalai the crowds have been mammoth they've been hysterical they've been very emotional Are you confident that they will translate into votes? Madam, you are under. Uh, I'm sure you will appreciate. You are such a senior journalist in our country. You will really appreciate. And they are very emotional crowd, madam. Yes, this very emotional. I saw that. And this crowd is not coming to see a cine star. When they come to see a cine star, they are treating you as a cine star. You look at my dress. I'm talking to you. No, you are okay. looking very fresh. For okay. I don't know how many how many hours have you been on the no, trail today? Long day from six. You are looking neater yeah. than I am. That I did. Six o'clock. <laughs> I just washed my face. I'm sitting. Look at my dress, madam. Yeah. So a cine star when they come, it's a different argument. I'm a common man. They come to see a common yeah. man. I'm very, very sure the emotional bonding that we share with the audience, with our spectators, with the crowd, whichever name we would like to call, hundred percent this will translate into votes. What will be a successful result for you? One is of course your own seat, but you're also the leader of the Tamil Nadu BJP. You now have a national and an international profile. What result will satisfy you, and you will consider it a success? for me bjp has to cross 20% alone and we have to reach somewhere near 25% that is a test for us as a party the nd has to cross 35% and a lot of people outside will say oh people party was here now suddenly big number yeah. and and of course our our goals are slightly big we are audacious we are working hard and that will satisfy us because that is a step 1 in 2024 the step 2 is 2026 for the state party elections now this is a bare minimum that i expect 
that BJP will get in Tamil Nadu. With respect to seats, we have kept an internal target of 25 for the NDA alliance. But in a very tight three-cornered contest as well across Tamil Nadu where BJP is emerging as a formidable force. And you never know how the seats are going to swing here and there. But I believe that we should reach that number, anyway close to that number. You've given a very, very honest answer. Most political people, uh, typical politicians would have by now said, oh, we are going to defeat the DMK. Oh, we are going to get so many seats. You do that. When you get 35%, you're going to defeat the DMK, <laughs> madam. It is implied. <laughs> okay, no, I was actually paying you a compliment that you didn't say something that you don't believe. Do you want to be chief minister of this state one day? 100% no, madam. 100% no? I want Why? To be a, I want to be a party worker. The party has still a long way to go. And uh, I want to be a party worker. I don't think I should get power or at this time in my life where a lot of grounds to cover. And we want to solidify the party. We want to build a party like Gujarat BJP. Hmm. Explain to build, that. We want to build a party for the next 25 years. Keep all combination of economic group with us. Reach out to everybody. Make sure all segments of the state get represented and not be a party where one election, even a 2% swing in the in the vote share will take you away. So you want to build a very robust party because Tamil Nadu is a perfect base. Once BJP comes to power with a very clear organizational build, then BJP will last in Tamil Nadu for long. I'm, I'm not very impatient to say, oh, we will come with anti-DMK votes and this votes will swing after with anti-incubancy. My goal is very clear, madam. Whoever is coming, my job is to make sure that MLAs and MPs come, make them to sit and stand wherever they want to go. But next 40 years, build a party that is robust, that is resilient. And nobody can just like that come and defeat that party. Because I believe that is my contribution as an individual to this great nation. Some people say this election would have looked very different had the AIDMK been an alliance with the BJP. Do you regret that that alliance, I know you in the past have been a critic of the way AIDMK has done its politics, but looking at this through numbers, do you regret that that alliance didn't work out? No, madam. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are a city in Coimbatore in 2014. Uh, BJP was, a, was part of an alliance. ADMK was part of an alliance. DMK was part of an alliance, madam. So take DMK's vote, take ADMK's vote and BJP's vote. 2019, ourselves and ADMK, we stood together. The sum total of ADMK and BJP's vote, if you take, BJP got less than what we got individually in 2019. So this is the case across Tamil Nadu. The vote transfer is just not happening. I don't know, maybe ADMK's work, uh, uh, political worker sees BJP as a threat. I don't know. And uh, that is for a very deep study to say. Or maybe, maybe ADMK doesn't take this alliance very seriously. I really don't know. But your house is your house, madam. Even one idli is your idli. <laughs> Ten idli is your idli. Because you exactly know where In you Hindi stand. In Hindi, we say, Jaisa hai, apna hai. However it is, it's your own. It's your own. From there, you know how to build. So there has to be a start. And that is why the national leadership, our senior leaders felt that BJP has to go alone. We formed an alliance of our own. And we are sitting in a pretty good position also. Now, when they say that BJP is this kind of party, that kind of party, June 4 will tell you and show you that BJP has emerged in Tamil Nadu. And BJP has to emerge in Tamil Nadu for BJP's growth journey to be complete. This is my humble submission and observation. Now, I know I'm taking too much of your time, so just two more questions. One is, the opposition says that there is a homogeneity that the BJP is forcing. The southern states don't like that. Federalism is a very strong part of our country. Uh, language is being, you know, there's a, there is a Hindi push. There is a homogeneous idea of religion. There is delimitation that is staring this part of the country in the face. There's now talk of one nation, one pole. Do you feel do you feel as someone, son of the soil from here, that there is a danger of too much centralization and there could be a pushback? And I ask you this because unlike so many other politicians, you have been a, a government servant, you have been a police officer, an IPS officer, so you understand some of these things even better than politicians. How do you respond to the criticism of too much centralization, too much cultural homogeneity? I'll take a little bit of time yes, to explain, please. madam. Um, of course, we all have a very distinct identity and uh, Honorable PM respects it because he comes from himself a Gujarat, a state that speaks yeah. a Gujarati language. And uh, he is the Prime Minister of our country now. Now, it's very funny when Congress says this because the whole problem was created by Congress in 1965 by making Hindi pushing it aggressively. Oh. A lot of people from DMK lost their lives, at least the uh, people who were the owing language, their allegiance to the right? Revender yeah. Kalagam. Yeah. And now, shamelessly, they both are an alliance and criticizing BJP now. And I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am a BJP karikarta. Yeah. And I speak to Honorable PM in English with my broken Hindi, whatever is possible. And PM sir responds to me in English. I speak to Honorable HM sir in English. HM sir responds to me in English. I speak to Nadaji in English. Responds to me in English. So they know that what language I am comfortable. They respond in that language. 
I'm, I'm just telling you as a karyakarta to a party leader. That's how we behave inside the party. National conventions happen. I speak in Tamil. Oh. And last time the PM was very clear. He called Bandi Sanjay Garu oh. from Telangana. He said, you should speak in five minutes in Telugu. Oh. Nirmala Sitaraman, madam. Uh, PM said, you should speak in Kannada. You should speak in Telugu. You should speak in Tamil. And, and unfortunately or fortunately, for us, we are very clear who we are as a party. And Congress still thinks it is 1970 era where they can simply create the small issues and DMK still believes 1960 era make Hindi versus non-Hindi. It is non-issue matter. It is non-issue now. It is not at all an issue in Tamil Nadu. Because they know when PM as a person gives so much respect to Tamil, the language, the culture, even in the current manifesto, we are, we are building Thiruvalluva statues across the world. And the only language that is represented in the manifesto is Tamil. We said Tamil will be given a distinct respect. Yeah. And an identity. Mm-hmm. Now, people of Tamil Nadu know Kasi Tamil Sangam, Sarvashtra Tamil Sangam, Sengol in the parliament, they know. And PM spends pretty much a lot of time in Tamil Nadu better. So, this narrative is not going to stick. I, I feel very sad, in a way happy, that the DMK got the narrative completely wrong in this 2024 Lok Sabha election. Because they have to speak about their achievements. Five things I've done, ten things I've done, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. They're talking about North, South, which, which they have been speaking for 40 years. That is not going to give any electoral tribune in this election. You call yourself straightforward and ordinary. What is the word you'd use for uh, the opposition, both the DMK and Congress? Madam, I'm not criticizing anybody, madam, because everybody is a hardworking, every party has got karyakartas, every leader is aspiring. But I would say, you cannot have a narrative as anti-Modi, madam. You've got to set your narrative. This election is all about what? India Alliance is saying, oh, Modi ji will not get 400. You yourself agree we are going to come to power. Anywhere are they saying they are going to come to power? In Tamil Nadu, you see the India Alliance. Modiji will not get 400. Even if you get 399, India Alliance will claim, oh, we, they have got one. No. You got to fight on your strength. What are you bringing to the table? What is your economic policy? What is your agenda? What is your growth story? You cannot just have a narrative anti-Modi from day in and day out. Two days, people will listen. Third day, they'll close their ears. I just finished an Atra eight months, madam, across Tamil Nadu, 234 constituents. In years in the ground. And people just don't want to hear anti-Modi bashing. It is only to a limit, madam. Because Modi is that kind of personality. You cannot operate on a zone of anti-Modi for a long time. It is going to inevitably bounce back. I don't know when these opposite parties are going to learn a lesson. Why Kacha Tivu in the middle of an election? That is because, madam, in February, the Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu was in Ramanathapuram. And he made a claim that Kachatiu was given without their knowledge and center is to be blamed and Modiji is not retrieving it, blah, 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 blah. He said he has written 21 letters. Oh, yeah. That slightly aroused my curiosity. I, I asked for two documents, which MEA denied one document. The 1968, uh, the meeting, so-called unofficial meeting between the Indian Prime Minister, Madam Indira Gandhi and the counterpart, Serenaika from Sri Lanka. Because that is the meeting, apparently, I believe and a lot of us believe the decision to gift Kachatiu was taken in between the Prime Minister, Prime Minister. That took six years for execution in 1974. And when we asked for that date of what actually happened in 1968, that was denied because it's still a privileged and classified info. Right. But 1974, apparently, of course, they have given that info to us, which clearly shows the minutes of meeting with Karnanadi. What we are trying to do, madam, one year back, we made an official stand that government of India should retrieve Kachatiu back. Of course, they will have diplomatic sensitivity. And for us, without Kachatiyu, the Tamil Nadu fisherman issue cannot be solved. It's a no-brainer. You've got to increase your national boundary. You cannot restrict the maritime boundary and solve it. Because Kachatiyu people are fishing till 1974. The worst part, the Article 6 of 1974 allowed Tamil Nadu fishermen to still visit Kachatiyu, put their uh, 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 the, the shore, go re- put, their, put their nets and come back. That is also taken in 1975. Foreign Secretary, Foreign Secretary talk. So we want to understand what exactly is it before we want to tell people that is what we're going to do. Because he started in February. I applied for the RTI within yeah. within a week. One was denied, one was granted. So that we got out to the open to show, look what they have done. Of course, the second part is more important. The first part is the truth. And without uncovering the truth, nobody can give you a result. The second part is going to be important. As Jay Shankarji has said that all options are on the table. I think in including a, asking for it. In, in a diplomatic parlance, I don't want to read between the lines or put words into Jay Shankarji's mouth. But since he mentioned all op- options on the table, which clearly shows that the government of India is very serious about th- solving the fisherman issue, specifically the Tamil fisherman issue between Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka, India and Sri Lanka. Finally, was it more difficult to be a police officer or is it more difficult to be a politician? Honest answers only because you said you're straightforward. 
politician is taxing madam uh, because police is straight forward job i am a very straight forward person i say okay black white you made a mistake finished you don't make a mistake i will save you whatever happens yeah. politics is not like that yes. many a times you are in the gray zone your morals get tested your act, your value systems gets tested but still you got to hold on to your principles every single day and this is a day thing very taxing every day it challenges you you cannot afford a single mistake you are in the press all the time one word can go wrong you are very conscious of course it keeps you away from family it keeps you away from many things you want to do reading traveling meeting people and like you said going to a hotel has become a difficult now sitting openly and taking a meal has become difficult. you get mobbed you get mobbed though you, though you want to live that life but you get mobbed and <laughs> prices you pay yeah for being a political person what's the first thing you'll do to treat yourself the day the campaign ends next day morning i report to kerala they have given me the schedule 19th i vote i voting finishes by 7 pm i leave through the night i report to palakkad canvas next day i am in kollam 23rd i report to karnataka canvas the schedule the party has given me till 25 we don't rest madam <laughs> i can't ask them give me a rest it's party we have to win 400 and wherever they think i can contribute 0.001% i go there so let me not add to your work burden okay. good luck namaskar thank, thank you, you thank and you thank you and really appreciate your making the time you were one of the most asked for interviews from our audience uh, and i'm really grateful to you for making the time anna malai they're saying no rest for him uh, the first phase may be ending but he's on his way to kerala then he's on his way to karnataka i rightly described him as very much the man of the moment he may say he's an ordinary guy uh, i can agree with the straightforward part but not with the ordinary guy anymore thank you so much sir thank you thank you, thank you. Namaskar and hello everyone welcome to a ride through the heart and the soul of India क्योंकि जब इलेक्शन सीजन आता है तो कौन जीता कौन हारा कौन आगे कौन पीछे ये बातचीत तो होती ही रहती है बट इट्स ऑल्सो अ टाइम फॉर ट्रैवल एंड मीटिंग पीपल एंड गेटिंग टू नो योर ओन कंट्री बेटर सो वेलकम टू द ढाबास ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी वेयर एवरी बाइट tell the story where every conversation will spice up your day experience the masala the flavor the swad of this election with us as we take a lovely a unique road trip from the south to the north of india traveling thousands of kilometers to bring you the flavor of this election <laughs>